Friendship ended with LaTeX. Now Giroff is my best friend. Okay, so if you watch this channel, you know that I have a lot of videos on LaTeX. I have a lot of videos on R Markdown. I have a lot of videos on Markdown and compiling it with Pandoc and stuff like that. If you never watched any of those, it's no big deal, but whatever. Uh, I'm a big proponent of writing documents, I guess in the, the command line, in the terminal, uh, or in you know whatever your preferred text editor is and compiling them with some kind of compilation software. It is much more extensible. It is much more versatile than writing, writing something in a what you see is what you get editor like Word or LibreOffice. So I'm very glad that I've gotten a lot of people involved with that kind of stuff. Um, but however, we have to go deeper because you know, LaTeX, Pandoc, all of these these things, I guess Pandoc is using LaTeX when it's compiling or something like that. But you know, the thing about LaTeX is that it is very big, it's very bloated. I mean, to have a full LaTeX install, it, install, it's like two gigabytes. And you may not know this, but there is a, there is a uh, document formatting service that comes with Unix platforms by default. Now on GNU Linux, it is called Groff. Or, well, someone is going to inter interject for a moment because it's actually pronounced Giroff. G is in GNU, of course. Um, but I just say Groff because, I mean, I, I'm a minimalist. I don't like using all these syllables. You know, one is enough. So there's Groff on GNU Linux, and on non GNU systems, there is Trough. Uh, that, of course, came beforehand. But in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, you, can, you can go ahead and look at you know, a man page for it. You probably have it already installed. This is not, there's like no resources on this. One of the reasons I haven't done a video on this is because I can't like, I can't just watch someone else's video and like get the basics. I basically had to figure a lot of the stuff out myself because the documentation, it's out there, but it's it's not very accessible. So hopefully this will help you if you're interested in this. Now, anyway, so first off, it's similar to you, you write whatever in a text document, uh, there are macros, there are shortcuts for formatting stuff, and then you compile it like you would LaTeX, except for it's way quicker, it is way more efficient, it's way more Unix compliant, you can use text streams and all of this stuff. Now the thing about, one thing you have to keep in mind is if you go to the bottom of the Groff manual, it mentions, um, there are actually a whole bunch of different macro packages, and this means there are going to be different packages with different commands that do slightly different formatting and stuff like this. Um, now, one you might be familiar with, maybe if you don't even know the word Groff, is uh, I think either man or mandoc. That's what people write manuals in, you know, like this document here. Um, you may be familiar with that. There are a bunch of other macro formats. The one I'm going to talk about today is Groff. Uh, underscore MS. I like this one. It just happens to be the one that I was playing around with. So I'll show you how it works. But all of these sort of work the same. Uh, without for further ado, you know, we're, we're talking too much. Let's just get into the action and we'll talk. Once you understand it, we can talk more about the details. Um, so I'm going to make a document. I'm going to call it graph.ms. Okay, again, because I'm using the MS macros. Uh, so some basic macros. Title is TL. So uh, my first graph document. Okay, uh, if you want to add an author, it's AU. So I'm going to put my author name in here. Actually, I noticed that Vim is not detecting the file type. So I'm going to, okay, great. Just had to run that. And uh, you can put in your institution, author institution. So let's say University of Arizona, et cetera. Uh, so this is just like in LaTeX when you have your title, your author, your institution command, um, or we can have paragraph text. So this is a paragraph. I always forget how to type when people are watching. So this is really how a graph document looks. Now I'm going to go ahead and say all the commands. This is one. This is going to be really weird when I tell you this, but all the commands in in a graph have to be at the beginning of a line. Um, now there are good Unix-like reasons for that. It's much easier to manipulate these kind of text files if all the commands are at the beginning. Uh, this is going to cause some things that look really weird, but it happens for a reason, and it's very nice. So it's going to just say I'm just saying this because it looks weird right now. Now I'm going to pull up now to compile this. Or, I mean, since it's so instantaneous, it doesn't really feel like it's even compiling. But in order to put this into a real document, uh, you just run graph. And since we're using the MS macros, I'm going to give it the MS option. And I'm going to select our file. And if you just run it, it's going to output all of this stuff. This is just PostScript. Uh, by default, it outputs in PostScript. But let's say, who uses PostScript? You know, whatever. I mean, we could we could output this to graph.ps or something like that. But I'm a PDF fan. I think everyone else is. That's sort of the standard nowadays. 
So I'm gonna use the T option and output this to PDF format. And again, by default, it's just gonna output to the terminal, so you have to say, uh, you know, graph uh, PDF. Okay, so now that is in a file, so I'm gonna open this up with my PDF reader, uh, graph PDF, and there we go. So my first graph document. Uh, the title is formatted, the user is formatted, or the, the author, whatever, uh, and the institution, and we have our paragraph text. So that looks very, very nice. Okay, so we can keep going. So uh, PPE is paragraph. Uh, let's say we want a section heading. To make one of those, we just say NH. I guess that's for new heading or something like that. I don't know, so uh, introduction. Okay, so let's recompile that. Uh, we'll see we have a section heading and like LaTeX or something, it's the section heading, at least in this macro set, is automatically numbered. So uh, we can have another section heading here. So let's say second section. And you'll see that it automatically has number two on it. Um, now we can also, let's see, what else can we do here? Now, uh, some things on basic formatting. Let's say I want to continue this paragraph. Now I could add some text here. That's going to show up in the paragraph as well or I could go down to the next line. Uh, one habit that I, I found is very useful with writing in LaTeX or any kind of thing, or any kind of like, uh, you know, uh, I guess document formatter, is it's very nice to like uh, add a sentence, uh, add like other sentences to, you know, the following line. And this is just so you can diff documents a little easier. So um, this way, you know, we can have another sentence and another, and uh, you know something like that, so we can very easily gr like uh, diff them or do other kind of operations on it or detect what's in what document. But all of these are going to show up in the same paragraph, and that's going to be true unless you make a double space. So if I double space this or put two new lines, you're going to see that this is now formatted as a sort of new paragraph. It's not going to be indented though. If we want indentation, you ha you should use the uh, PP command because that is going to indent everything. It doesn't really look indented because we don't have a, actually I guess we could throw some more uh, text here. So you can see that yes, both of these are in fact indented. Okay. So anyway, that's basic uh, formatting here. Um, additionally, if you want subsections, I would say we want some subsections. So I can do NH2. And what that means is uh, a section at the second level. So this is a subsection. Um, let me capitalize that because of autism or something. And uh, go back up here, format it, and you'll see that this is now 2.1. Now, keep in mind, this 2 here has nothing to do with the 2 that appears here. This just means at the second level. So if we redo this, I mean, if we have another section heading here, another section heading, um, the 2 just means, you know, at the, the second level from the top. Now these other nh commands implicitly they have a one argument. If you put a one here, it's not going to change anything because one just means the top level and that's inferred if you don't have anything. So that's headings, that's paragraphs. Um, now if you want to format text, if you want to do bolding, italics, uh, it's just as easy. Although it's going to again, it's going to come off as a, a little weird. Let me show you what I mean. So let's start a new paragraph here. Um, so here is some more text. I want the word bold to be bold, okay? Now what I'm gonna do here, now this is a little strange, actually let me, for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna get rid of those uh, quotation marks. Now as I said before, all commands, all macros have to be initial, like line initial. So in order to bold this word here, what you actually have to do is you go down here and you put it on its own line and uh, I'm, well, I'm gonna put this in quotation marks now. What this in effect is doing is this is running the B command on the first argument. And I've put this argument in quotation marks. These quotation marks are not gonna show up. I mean, I could put in escaped quotation marks if I wanted them, but um, this is effectively saying run the B macro on this argument. Or, uh, well, anyway, I'll just show you. It looks like, looks like what you would expect. This is now bold. Uh, I could add in, of course, multiple, you know, however much stuff I want. Um, if I wanted to the this so again this is going to be a little bit weird because we have to if we want bolding or italics inside of our line we actually have to in the document we have to start a new line put it there and then you know start another new line to continue um, now as again as I said uh, you know this it's 
it's something you can actually avoid. I'll talk about that maybe later, maybe in another video, but um, this is just something that makes it easier to do basic stream manipulation. If you're sending the output somewhere, if you want to perform operations on it, if you want to detect what arguments or what, what uh, macros are being run, it's easier to do, do it with this kind of uh, constraint on where they can appear. So anyway, just keep that in mind. All right, but anyway, so we have bolds. Uh, we can have, you know, uh, italic text uh, with I. So run that, and notice also that even though I typed in dot i, since it's not a big at the beginning of a line, it's not going to appear as an argument. It's just going to appear as a uh, dot i. So you can have italic it, italic text, or let's say um, this is bold italic text, and um, uh, well, I'll put the period in here. So recompile that, you'll see that. Now you can check out the manual for more of these kind of macros, but this is just the kind of uh, basic formatting. Uh, there are some other things, let's say I want, um, one other thing that uh, they, they'll often have is macros for starting or ending particular types of formatting. Let's say we want, let's say uh, I'm actually gonna duplicate, I'm gonna go to this paragraph here, um, and I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm just gonna copy it a couple times, so just so we have an example. All right, and uh, recompile that so we have some paragraphs. Now let's say I wanted this middle paragraph to be indented a little more. So one thing we can do for that, we can use the, uh, I'm trying to, a little confused which one we're on. We can use RS, that means, um, I guess, start and indent. I don't actually know what the RS, it never occurred to me. I don't know what the RS stands for. But you have RS and you end it with RE, and that just means start and end your indent. So I'm going to put these commands here. I'm going to run graph again, and you'll see that now this paragraph is indented a little bit further in, the second paragraph. So that's one thing you can do. Also, at the beginning of your document, you can have an abstract. So abstracts are with AE for abstract, or excuse me, AS for abstract start. So this is an abstract, and AE for in the abstract. Okay, and so I'm going to re recompile that. Wait, oh, AB. Oh, sorry, I guess I messed that up. It's really a B for begin instead of a S. Apologies for that. Uh, but anyway, so we have uh, an abstract here. It appears here nice and formatted and we can write however much we want. Uh, let's see what else. But uh, I, well, I think I think this is about it for this video. Um, I'm gonna probably do, actually I am gonna do more on this. So this is, should give you all you need for basic formatting. Uh, you can compile it very easily. Now there are other very useful things. So let's say you wanna have pictures. Let's say you wanna have uh, citations. Let's say you wanna have tables, other things like that. Um, to do that kind of stuff, that's what the next videos are gonna be on. But to do that, you have to use what's called a preprocessor. Now there are other commands besides graph where, well, we'll just talk about it in the next video. Next video, I'll talk about citations and probably some other stuff. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. So stay, stay tuned.